All right, good morning from Lake Superior. Our first trip out on the big lake this year. I would consider this ice out fishing. Coming through Bayfield there, we still had some skim ice. Thankfully, there were a couple boats in front of us that kind of carved a pathway for us that we were able to, to go down. Um, there's still a lot of big ice chunks out here on the lake. The wind today might make that kind of interesting, blowing them around. I don't know what the, what the day's gonna bring, but there is still a lot of big, you know, sheets of ice out here in the lake that are kind of floating around. So hopefully we're gonna be able to avoid those today and put fish in the boat. Our plan is to troll high in the water column for cohos, brown trout, lake trout, splake. They're all kind of mixed in together. We don't really know what we're gonna catch, but that's the fun of it this time of year is this is a variety, a smorgasbord of, of fish. So we are heading out from Bayfield right now. There's no ice up in here. All the ice right now is down in Ashland area, out in front of Washburn. That's where all that ice is. We kind of have a south wind today, so it may blow that north, but you don't know. So we're out here fishing. We left the keys in the truck in case someone needs to grab our truck and bring it to a different boat landing. We're out here fishing. It's a beautiful day. No skim ice out here. So um, yeah, we're gonna be trolling mono high in the water column on planer boards. And it should be, should be a good day. Cold water right now, 34 degrees. Kind of clear, kind of murky. Um, that's what I like though. So we're gonna put down the cameras, make about a 10 minute run and get lines in the water. Welcome to season three of Superior Angling TV. Brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Here we go, we made it. Not a ton of skim ice on the way over, but there were a few spots where we had to, had to definitely slow down. So that's one thing to keep in mind this time of year. Yes, it's nice to get out here bright and early, and yes, it's nice when you have days with no wind, but in April, something to keep in mind, every year this happens, no wind equates to skim ice. And skim ice, I mean, it, it's a pain to run through in your boat and you can't troll through it. So, um, you know, if you have a day that it is kinda, it doesn't even have to get down to freezing, 34, 35, 36 degrees at night, and you're still gonna have skim ice out on the, out on the lake here um, if there's no wind. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. Year after year it plays out, same scenario. So um, luckily we had some, some wind overnight. The wind is blowing out of the south right now which means that there is no skim ice in this area. So that is definitely a good thing. There's a lot of debris right here, running through it right now, but we're just setting out lines. So we're just gonna run a straight mono program right now. There's no need for lead core this time of year. There's no need for lead core or snap weights until you get to, you know, let's say late May, for instance. So right now it is totally straight mono is all you need. We may run some down diggers down about 10 feet um, just to eliminate the need for four planter boards on each side of the boat. So Wisconsin waters, three lines per person, three guys in the boat today. We got Busker, we got Jake. Um, so we can run nine rods total. So we'll probably run three planter boards on each side, two down diggers, and maybe long line one to give us our nine rods. So that's just kind of the, the rundown today. So just shallow diving stick baits, 
no need for big deep diving baits. Could they work? Of course, um, but just kind of our, our program, what we have confidence in our shallow diving baits, like husky jerks, scatter wraps, um, bomber long A's. So that's kind of what we're gonna, we're gonna stick to. So we're gonna deploy all our boards here. Um, got some other boat action, so kind of figure out a, a good path to go and hopefully get a trolling pass down where we're gonna be able to put some fish in the boat. that board grab it Nick. there we go that's a good start yeah. that's a good start we'll turn the clicker yeah. off there the slow and steady is the name of the game there we didn't even have all our rods in the water <laughs> that's what you like to see I always say on a day-to-day -day basis out here that first fish is your hardest to catch you just don't know what area the fish are gonna be positioned in. You don't know what they wanna eat, what speeds they want. All right, I'm gonna grab a net. There we go. Nice. Really small coho, but <laughs> hey, that works. That works. We gotta readjust your expectations a little bit from uh, Lake Michigan. Yeah. Our, our salmon are definitely not comparable to Lake Michigan salmon. However, we are just fortunate enough to, to have them. That's a good one though, bud. Awesome. Not a, a bad. Good start. That is a good start. Yeah. We're gonna throw him in the live well. A little bit on the on the smaller size. Yeah. I, I'd say this is a below average size coho for out here. Um, however, what they lack in size, they make up for in taste. So that one will taste delicious. What lure do we have there? That looks like a uh, jointed hot steel scatter wrap. Yeah, yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. That's your first fish on the for the for the open water season, huh? First fish of the year. There you go. Good start. Not, not a bad one. Yeah. Not a bad one. Yeah. Yeah. That, that lure day in and day out is this incredible. Good deal. So 47 feet of water right now. Our baits are only down there about four, five, six feet. So these fish are suspended high in the water column this time of year. That's a good sign. I like it. Nice one. Bam. Good it's start. gonna be a good day. Yeah. At Minnesota Resort Sales, we only sell family-owned resorts and campgrounds. Has your family ever dreamed of being the proud owners of a resort? Take the first step. Log on to mnresortsales.com and take a look at the 35 to 40 operations that we have for sale. The resort you'd love to own might be for sale right now. Then give us a call and let's talk about your family's future. Your way of life means everything to you. That's why we put our everything into fueling. We're here for you. Every moment, every day, every season. With a dependable propane supply and competitive pricing plans that fit your budget. Superior fuel. Switch and save up to $500 annually on your propane. Visit savewithsuperior.com. When we care about something, it shows. To help protect these things, call on the knowledge and experience of a local independent insurance agent that you know and trust. Some things we just can't afford to lose, and that is why we exist, because the worst brings out our best. Holden Insurance, Duluth and Superior, For 40 plus years, the MPCA's Citizen Water Monitoring Program has supported thousands of volunteers across the state, helping to collect valuable data to better understand the quality and health of our lakes and streams. And with over 12,000 lakes and 92,000 miles of streams, we need more volunteers all across the state to help monitor them. Anyone can sign up to help monitor them and no prior experience is required. Water clarity is an important indicator of the health of lakes and streams within our state. We rely on clean water for everything we do, including fishing, and the job of the MPCA is to help protect our waters. Join the MPCA's Citizen Water Monitoring Program today and help make a difference for your favorite lake or stream. 
fish on. Fish, fish, fish. It feels like a better coho. You just don't know sometimes because they hit your lures and they just freak out and sometimes they can be hooked weird. But hopefully this is gonna be a 19, 20 inch fish. And we found a nice pot of clear water right now. So, you know, we always say this time of year that we're fishing high in the water column. We're not fishing bottom structure. We're not fishing any structure at all. But this time of year, what your structure is, is water clarity and water temp. So again, I'm not too concerned about water temp yet because everything's pretty much 33, 34 degrees. However, water clarity is gonna be your structure. We're in clear water right now. Back there, right before we got hit, we were in dirty water. So this fish was positioned adjacent to a mud line. And again, it's gonna be a coho salmon. Once you start to catch a few of these, you get a feel for what they are before you even get it in. There are brown trout around here. There are lake trout, there are splake, there are kings. However, this is gonna be another coho. Buster's gonna grab our net here and that's gonna be two fish and not a very long period of time. So that's what you like to see out here. There we go. Not as big as I was anticipating. However, we are not gonna complain because we're out here on Lake Superior, guys. It doesn't get any more fun. This is my favorite body of water to fish out of any place we've ever gone. It's such a diverse fishery. You can do anything from big lake trout to smallmouth to pike to walleyes to salmon. This lake has it all. And I love getting out here each and every day. So the reason we chose to come down here to the Bayfield area, um, up around Duluth, the water is very, very cold and we just don't have those big pods of fish coming through. There are some fish, I know for a fact, there are some fish down towards the lift bridge, but right now um, there's a lot of ice in, the, in that area. So it's, you can't really get a boat down there. So we chose to trailer down here to the Apostle Islands area to come after these salmon. So, you know, we'd be running the same program in the Duluth area if, you know, the fish were on, if we could get to where we wanted to go, but there's still too much ice, out, ice up there. So. This is truly ice out fishing on Lake Superior for salmon. Look at that, that's a good one. That's a good fish. That is a better fish, yeah, that is weight. That one feels a little bit heavier. Just getting reset from our last fish in the same area, same water clarity. That's about all you can ask for is to get a couple fish in a short period of time out here, early season. It's tough when you come out here and you get a fish every hour when there's no rhyme or rhythm to it. But today, so far, what we've seen in the first 45 minutes of trolling is starting to get a pattern together. That's on that bomber along A, so that's good. We've got three fish on three different lures. That's a bigger coho. That's a good coho, guys. Three different colors, too, so far. Three different colors, three different manufacturers of lures. And that's a great example of why we try to run different, you know, we put out a smorgasbord of lures and profiles when we start our trolling day. Look at that, that's a nice coho. That's probably in that 18, maybe pushing 18 and a half inch range, a very good coho. I would say, you know, this is kind of back towards the average of what we normally get out here. So, um, you know, 15, 16 inches are, are fun but it's nice when you get them 17, 18, maybe 19 inches even. So, you know, as you guys saw two weeks ago on an episode, we were down in Lake Michigan fishing coals, you know, down there it was 21, 22, 23 inches. Here we're just a little bit smaller, but still, you know, same species of fish. We just grow them a little bit smaller here in Lake Superior, but in my mind, they, they taste better. They're better eating, but yeah, no, that's a, definitely a, a very good salmon. And we're gonna get him in the live real quick here. That's three fish, not a very long time, on three different lures. That's what you like to see. They're not picky. Um, our speeds have been varying, you know, 2.2 two to 2.4, two 2.5. Two so um, I think we're in a good pot of them. So we're in a bunch of clear water here. We're gonna try to turn the boat around and go back through them. We got hit again here, kind of in the same area where we just caught our last one. Bait on the screen again, and that board just sagged back. This feels like a better fish too. And surrounded by boats, so we gotta keep our eyes out for that. Swing this board right to you. Wow, another nice coal hole right there. 
Take your time, we'll bring it right to you. It's on that Brad's. That's four fish, four different lures. Four different colors, that's crazy. Another nice one. Yeah, that same old. one. That's chunky. That's that one that hit hard earlier. Yeah, we had a strike on that one. Yeah. Another nice coal here. Well, 15-incher, 16-incher. Good eating right there. Oh, yeah. Number four. Yeah. <laughs> He's a good eater. Oh, fish, 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 fish. Right there. Before we can get the other lines out, we got hit again. Feels like a really nice one. Yeah, that rod yeah. really loaded up there. Yeah, that's a better fish there, for sure. Oh, yeah. We've only had one fish on this side. All the fish have been, all the rest of the fish have been on this yeah. side. This is a good one. It's pulling? That's a, that's a good one. This will wake you up. Yeah. It's worth getting up at 3.15 a.m. for <laughs> stuff like this, huh? Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Come this way for the rod tip if you can. There we go. Yeah, still good coho. Oh, though. nice. Yeah. Awesome, number five, huh? Yep, five. Sweet. And that's on that bomber long A again. That's the second fish on that color right there. Yeah, it's been a hot one. Yeah. All right, so some of you guys have probably noticed this year we have two grass in our dash. We have a Hummingbird Helix 10 and we have a Markham RT9. Both great units. This is the exact RT9 that we use ice fishing. So we simply took it off our dock that we use for ice fishing and put it right here. On our big Lund, we have an open water transducer going back, so we can use this for sonar and GPS. Right now, I have my micro SD map chip that is in here, so we're using this for navigation. We're using our Hummingbird for sonar right now. Um, the sonar functionality on the RT9 is the exact same as the LX7, it's rock solid. Um, but I just have that micro SD card in the RT9, so we have very clear, detailed maps. I can see exactly on this break that we're fishing where we are positioned on it. It gets very shallow very fast, so having a nice, um, you know, Navionics contour maps of the area that we're on in a full screen is, um, you know, it plays a huge benefit. So we're, we are graphing big balls of bait. Um, it seems like every time we start to graph bait and, you know, fish, we get hit. So. Um, you know, I don't think the, the fish that we're catching are positioned on the bait, but you know, your salmon will position themselves around the bait. You know, they'll, they'll be adjacent to it within 30, 40, 50 yards each way, and they can come in, eat when they want to, and kind of disperse off to the sides and rest and wait to come back and eat again. So um, where you have bait, you are gonna have fish early season like this. These smelt have not started running yet, but a lot of smelt are in the area, and that is what we are graphing down there. Big balls of it, you know, as big as this bowl, there'll be a couple hundred smelt grouped up together and we're seeing those on on the hummingbird right now so there's fish. a fish right here inside that's a double oh, we have a we double have, we, have the outside one too. we have a double outside that's what we like to see that's a double it's chaos right now so busker we can't even i'll let that one sit in the rod holder yeah we can't even reel in that rod right now all right so you're clear all right, you start clearing those other lines busker yep i'm just gonna hoist this coho into the boat i hope it's hooked good Looks like he's double hooked. Yeah, hey, I think he's on that back one. Flip him. Whoa, nice one too. Look at that. That's on that thin fin. I think it's a thin, I don't know if it's a thin fin or thin fish. I have to look at that. Brad's makes a version, Storm makes another version. One's called the thin fin, one's called the thin fish. That's two fish and we lost one on that as well. Here, give me. I'll take the inside, you take the fish. No, you got the fish. Go ahead, bud. All right, I won't argue with that. <laughs> That's when you know you have a good fishing buddy when he lets you reel in the fish. <laughs> it feels good too. Yeah, that one. That one we were nicer. just got done seeing, like, man, I'm surprised we haven't got a, cent or a a double yet. And sure enough, here it is. Lure. What are we looking at, Busker? Coal. It's on the back hook too. There we Beauty. Go. Yes, yes, yes. That guy's is a double. Oh, that's what you like to see. Schooled up coho salmon, ice out on Lake Superior. Magical, absolutely magical. First double. First double of the day. I'm guessing it's not gonna be our last. I love seeing doubles like that. Oh, that's a good one too. Right there, outside board. Grab yep. her, bud. Grab her. 
All right, and here's what we're doing. This is our ninth line, it's our long line. I'm just gonna put this right over here. I have a rod holder ready for it to go. Put it there, it's out of the way, it's good. I'm gonna start clearing these lines now. And this fish is hitting though, there's a little bit more dirty water here. Yeah. Man, we are on fire this morning. All these fish, this is our ninth one, have all come in like an hour and a half, two hours probably. Yeah, this is right after our double too. This, so. is, this is good action, this is good action. I'm pretty sure this just got hit too. This one feels weight. I think we have another double, guys. We're gonna find out here. I think we do have another double though. Oh, we got a triple. This one's going no on this way. side. Yep, yep right here. we have a triple. We can just let that one ride. <laughs> that one can, unless <laughs> anybody- got a four, four right here, inside on. one, yeah. <laughs> unless someone could jump through the camera oh. <laughs> or jump through the TV and come help us. We're just gonna let that sit there. Unbelievable, four on at one time. That's wild. This is crazy. That is one. Awesome, that's one. We're going to these other ones. We're just gonna put him on the floor. What rod was it, this one? The inside and then the middle, middle. I Let's think this one got that. off. No, he's still there, he's yeah, still he there. Here, we need to reel this long line in. Unbelievable, guys. Look at that. Good, he came off, so I'm glad I didn't hoist it in there. That's what you want to see when you run into a big pot of salmon. I mean, pure chaos. Yep, this one's gone. That one's still there. Here, take this one. I'll trade you. That's wild. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Every line but one got hit. <laughs> I've been... Two. That matches a, a record for me. Like, maybe six, seven years ago, Dad and I were on the social fishing wall as we had five boards go back at one time. This is just as many. I think this one got off too. That just got off, okay. Two for six, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you can't be mad about it. Nope. Holy cow, that was. That was I, crazy. I'm like physically tired. Yeah. <laughs> it's summer again at Marine General and we're here to get you on the water. Kayaks, canoes, and paddle boards. Water sports, knee boards, wetsuits, ropes, and leg vests. Rain gear, marine safety, electronics of all kinds, rods and reels, trolling motors, rod holders and all kinds of accessories for your boat, live bait, lures, and a crew that appreciates your business. This spring, shop the great selection of Lund and Crestliner fishing boats at RJ Sport and Cycle. Our knowledgeable staff is here to answer all your questions and help you get on the water. We sell both aluminum and fiberglass boats suitable for a variety of applications. Full windshield models, side consoles, tillers, and more. We sell them all. Don't forget, we also carry pontoons. RJ Sport and Cycle is your leading Lund dealer in the area. Visit us in store or check us out online today. For 40 plus years, the MPCA's Citizen Water Monitoring Program has supported thousands of volunteers across the state, hoping to collect valuable data to better understand the quality and health of our lakes and streams. And with over 12,000 lakes and 92,000 miles of streams, we need more volunteers all across the state to help monitor them. Anyone can sign up to help monitor them and no prior experience is required. Water clarity is an important indicator of the health of lakes and streams within our state. We rely on clean water for everything we do, including fishing, and the job of the MPCA is to help protect our waters. Join the MPCA's Citizen Water Monitoring Program today and help make a difference for your favorite lake or stream. Go for it, go for it, fish, fish. Right there, there's another one, double. He's there. Oh, flat line, flat line, flat line. Flat line? Yep. That's another triple. Here we are, right here, come on. There we are. Look at that. Here, take that one too. Okay. <laughs> so guys, that's another triple. We lost this one. I'm gonna, All right. this is why I always carry two nets in the boat. The hooks are just buried in that one. We'll just grab this net. Come on, baby. 
Come on, baby. Oh, it's close. That's a nice one. Look at that. All right. I like it. I like it. Nice. Guys. Look at that. Just back to back. <laughs> back to back salmon. Yeah. That one was our triple. And this is the exact area where we had six on not 15 minutes ago. So they are loaded yeah. in here. Oh man. man, I'm out of breath, huh? How cool is that? But again, this is a, you know, we always try to carry two nets with us just for that exact situation. I don't have to sit there and try to finagle the hooks. Another one. Another Which one? one? Oh gosh. Yeah. That's triple. A, a, a triple, pretty much a quadruple. Yeah. And this is all in two and a half hours. Like not that long. Unbelievable. How much fun is this though? Like this gets your adrenaline going. That's why you get up at three o'clock yeah, in the morning. Right? I know, I know. I was so tired this morning. I'm like, oh, do we have to go? Yeah. Heck yeah, we do. Ready? Here he is. Look at that. I mean, That's what I'm talking about. Just magic. Just magic. I mean, the plan starts to come together. You get a presentation dialed down. I mean, the boat is an absolute mess with salmon scales and <laughs> flop and fish. Look at that. Yeah. Guys, like that's what it's all about, eh? Oh yeah. <laughs> Springtime salmon, <laughs> ice out salmon oh. on Lake Superior. What a riot. What a riot. Oh yeah. Baby. <laughs> Man. Come on. Another one. You want to take this one? Right? Unbelievable. You got this one? Here, we got to clear that inside okay. rod. Yeah, I got it. It just doesn't stop. It just doesn't stop. We got our limit almost. Yeah, stop. right? Here, I'm going to trade you. You take this one. You don't get to get out here that much. Busker's sitting Feels there running good. camera. He's like, oh, I think there's a fish on that one, too. Feels I just good. got hit. I just got hit. Yeah. I literally just got hit. Just yep. reeling it in? Yep. It's unreal. <laughs> unreal. <laughs> I've never, I don't think I've ever experienced salmon fishing like this in my life. <laughs> I'm just going to hoist this one, guys. Ready? Or you got one. I told you I had one. Oh. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> this is our limit. We can pull all the lines and we can't have any more. That's 15. Here, here you go. Step yeah. back, step back. I told you I got it. You didn't even realize I had one on. I, you right, said real, you got a real, hit, but. Real. You said you had a hit, but I didn't know you it had got, one on. It got hit right behind the boat. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> this is going to be 15, right, isn't get it? The net. Oh, you're right here. I'm right I'm here. I'm not ready. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. Oyster. Saltwater that's style. That's 15. That's the limit. <laughs> Woo! That is 15 salmon in about two hours yeah. out here on Lake Superior. They're just lay they're... This is a big one. This is a big one too. Like, you just got five fish laying in the bottom of the boat. No big deal. Huh? No. Oh, okay, man. so this is physically fun. we can't keep any more salmon. It wouldn't be ethical to catch them, put them in the net, so all their scales fall off and release them. Now what we, I think we're gonna do is go hunt for some brown trout, but 15 salmon in two and a half, three hours. <laughs> Speechless, buddy. Speechless, guys. Unbelievable. How much fun is that, huh? <laughs> Doesn't get much better. This is a mess. Jeez. This is a mess. Oh. 